This is the one. This is the episode. Or the video. I, every time I say episode, I'm like, this is the episode of Dragon Ball Z. I don't know why. I just feel like I'm doing an episode of Dragon Ball Z. Um, but major scale. This is the episode video that's going to blow your mind. Um, so the major scale is now you guys already have a, an understanding of terms. You know you don't have to learn how to read and write music. Um, what you do need to know is what the major scale is. Now this thing, if it doesn't make sense and you don't figure it out in the very first try, no big deal. Um, come back to this video all the time. This is your best friend, the major scale. From this point forward, you're going to hear me talk about the major scale all the time. It is uh, the best, straight up the best. It's your best friend when it comes to music. Um, and if you can understand what it can do, you're going to be having the best time. So this first part of the video, we're going to do what is the major scale, how you can break it down, uh, play it on the guitar. Uh, and then the next part of the video, you don't have to memorize. I'm just going to show you examples of what it can do and, um, and what future videos will be breaking down using the major scale. So I am going to play a G major scale. So this is what it's going to sound like. Cool, right? So we have 12 notes uh, in the in 12 let like 12 letters that you can play. You already know that. Now, what a major scale is, we're going to pick out seven of them in a specific sequence that is going to create this sound. So basically, these seven notes, you're going to play through them and then they repeat. You're just going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. That's basically all that's happening. Now, the major scale itself is going to consist of, so this is gonna be the interval progression that I'm gonna, I have the note here, interval progression. So it's basically the sequence of the notes is gonna go like this. So you can have your starting note. Now, we're going to be moving like this. Tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. So I'll do that again. Starting note, tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. And see, now we're back at the same note. Now, if you remember that interval that we talked about, that's an octave. So G, G, G. I'm playing the same starting note again. Now, if we do it in steps, like I sometimes I talk in tones and steps. So you got starting note, whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Wow, crazy, right? So if we're gonna play this on the guitar fretboard, you're gonna be starting on the third fret, on the, on the, so on the E string, third fret, that's your G note. So you're gonna go third fret, fifth fret, seventh fret. Now we move to the A string, three, five, seven, and then we're gonna be moving to the D string, four, and then fifth fret. And that is your whole scale. So that is what a major scale is. Now, you have most likely heard a major scale before if you've watched Sound of Music or you've watched or been in a choir or if you ever listened to any kind of Western musical thing, they, you've probably heard this at some point. So this is our note. Do, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. That's where the solfege comes from. You're just singing a major scale. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Um, and so that is what a major scale is. So you're probably kind of familiar with, with a major scale. So that shape, which is very, very cool, can actually move everywhere on the fretboard. Now, what determines what scale it is, is what is the starting note. So this starting note... And now I'm going to build a major scale from this starting note. So that's a G. I'm going to build a major scale. Tone, tone, semi, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. Boom, G. Now we're about to move on to the things that are very fancy. So from this point, you don't need to memorize anything else. Uh, anything else. Everything before then, please memorize. Memorize the note here. Tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone and see if you can build it yourself. Um, just try to get the hang of it. And a lot of these concepts, like I'm, tr I'm condensing. If you're wondering like, 
oh, I'm not getting it. I'm not getting it. Yeah, you're not meant to get it. Like, this is this is very simple, yet very hard. It's you are learning a new language. You are kind of like really stepping into the language of music, and so that will be a learning process. Um, try to be open to it. Um, and be like, I trust Luan. He's going, <laughs> he's going to get me across the finish line. Hopefully, it will make sense. Um, it will be weird. Um, you will be uncomfortable. But once you do get the hang of it, you'll be like, oh my god, I am so glad I got through this painful process, and then now I can do this. And you will understand why it's so brutally amazing. It's absolutely a game changer. So we're kind of going through Harmony One that you would typically learn at Berkeley. Um, so this is pretty much harmony one, uh, like they seriously bring it down to this simple. Uh, and I've watched people who are fantastic musicians who come into Berkeley and it really takes them a while for them to get the hang of this. It's, it's wild, right? Major scale. Like we can play the crap out of them. Like someone will tell you, Oh, like I can show you how to play a major scale. Boom. You know, but to really be like, someone's like, Oh, well, what, how do you build a major scale? It's like, Oh, well, it's a tone, tone, semitone, tone, 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 semitone. Like that is like they don't really know that. Like a lot of people don't really learn that. They're just told play this and then they play that and they memorize it and that's it. But we really want to understand how it works. And so really respecting how to build a major scale is going to really change the way you approach theory. So that being said, let's go into the things that I don't want you to remember, but I'm going to show you why it's so awesome. So if you know where the starting note of your major scale is going to be, so if you're a guitarist, this is really handy. Um, once you know the shape of the major scale, which is this, uh, say we're starting on, on the low E string, we're going three, five, seven, and then A string, three, five, seven, and then four, five. I can do a bunch of cool ninja stuff of like, as long as I know the, um, the E string and the A string letter names, I can pretty much play any scale I want ever. So I can go starting note F, keep the same shape. Bam, I've got an F major scale. I go to the note uh, C sharp. Oh, sorry, a B. Bam. And then I go to, say I do go to C sharp, I can start here. That's a C sharp. Bam, I've got another major scale. Very easy. So the cool thing about guitarists is you don't have to learn a bunch of cool, uh, you don't have to learn a bunch of different ways to play the major scale. Once you know how to do it once, you're good. So... Um, that's really, really awesome about guitar. Now, the other really cool thing about a major scale is, you know how we were talking briefly about intervals in the previous video, so the distance between, between notes. If you do this thing called, um, like if you start playing notes and start creating intervals between the notes, you can start creating what we call arpeggios. So say I'm playing my G major scale again. Now I'm going to skip a note, so I'm gonna create a, a, an interval of a third. So that's a major third. And then I'm gonna skip one note and then go to here. So that note there is a minor third. So those two intervals that I just did now creates the sequence, which we call an arpeggio. So this is a major arpeggio. So one, three, five, bam, which we're going to go into a second. Now, if I stack those notes, ready for this? This is the crazy thing about guitar or just in general music. So this note here is right here, but it's also that octave right here. So if I stack this note and if I can stack this note here and I get this note here, so I'm, I'm using all the same notes. I'm just using them, their octave counterparts. I create this. G major chord. Who would have thunk it? So that's the really, really cool thing about the major scale. This is how you build your chords. It all comes from the major scale. Uh, now, the other super legendary thing that we're going to talk about is, so say I start my major scale on the first note and I go, I get a major chord. Now, if I start it on the next note and do the same thing of like stacking uh, thirds, we get a minor chord. And we're gonna discuss that in a bit, but that's how we start creating what we call diatonic chords. And that's all the chords that you hear in a song that can be used in chord progressions. Um, and then the other thing that is uh, pretty wild is uh, a very, very advanced, oh, not very advanced, but it is an advanced concept that 
um, other guitarists, you'll understand what I'm talking about because you hear it all the time. It's called modes. Uh, and what they are is if you start on a different note of the major scale and you build around that note, you can create what we call a mode. Um, now, I'm a huge fan of John Mayer, and he typically does a particular mode called Dorian in quite a few of his songs. He will jump into this cool thing called the Dorian, and then he will make it built around this. So say I'm playing a G major scale. Now, if I start on the A note, which is the second note, I can go... So you see, I'm not changing the notes that I'm playing. I'm playing the exact same notes here. But if I start on this note and I build it around it, it sounds, it has a different tone. So I can do the same thing, starting on this one here. So, these modes create like this really unique characteristic. So we're borrowing from major scales and starting on different nodes and then and then honing in on that. So that's really advanced, but you can see how just this one scale can like expand into doing a bunch of really, really cool things. So there's seven notes in the major scale, so there's seven modes, and you can have heaps of heaps of fun in being creative in your improvisation and stuff like that. So that's why even though... You guys are doing beginner stuff. You're either playing beginner chords or some of you are doing the improvisation course or looping course. These theory concepts are going to be so paramount into unlocking a brand new level of playing. So major scale, your best friend. Um, and I shall see you as we start expanding on the major scale in the next videos. So stay safe and I will see you in the next video. Let's go.